Good morning. Happy Tuesday. I have neural coffee in hand and it is perfect. All right. A very busy Tuesday uh, coming up. First, a uh, quick housekeeping item, the next intensive. So this would be intensive 17, I believe. Um, we're looking at sometime around mid-May. So I think it's the second week of May where that will occur. Um, I will confirm those dates with you uh, very soon. Um, if you have not gotten on the email list, go to any blog post on BillHartmanPT.com and you can get your name on the list so you get notified first so you can get your application in prior to everyone else and give yourself a really good shot at getting in. Okay, digging into today's Q&A. This is with Taya. Um, Taya had a question in regards to shoulder flexion, so she was watching some of the videos on YouTube and still needed some clarification as to where we're going to see expansion, where we're going to see compression, and then what type of an activity might we select to get people into these spaces where they can actually reach overhead because there's a lot of confusion as to what is external rotation, what is internal rotation, and a lot of information is getting perpetuated that is actually inaccurate. So Taya, thank you for asking this question. You're going to help a lot of people. If you'd like to participate in a 15-minute consultation, please go to askbillhartman at gmail.com, askbillhartman at gmail.com. Please put 15-minute consultation in the subject line so I don't delete it. Please include your question in the email, and we will take care of those as quickly as we can and arrange those at our mutual convenience. Everybody have an outstanding Tuesday, and I will see you tomorrow. It was regarding the uh, how to gain um, end ranges of shoulder flexion. Okay. But the question was whether you could do it in a quadruped position. And then you started talking that when you put someone in quadruped position, you would you could also get the expansion below the scapula. Yes. So I just wanted to go over how and why and whether it would be wiser to use like low reaches to get uh, or am I getting that wrong? Um, okay, so what the intention is to get the arm overhead? Okay. Uh, just like uh, just to uh, improve those end ranges of shoulder flexion. It was yeah, the question that, about that. Yeah, we're, we're try yeah, we're, we're trying to get the arm yeah. overhead, right? Okay. All right. So <clears throat> if you're standing upright, mm -hmm. um, how did the lungs fill with air from the top down or from the bottom up? Bottom up. Excellent. So, so for us to move the arm through the excursion of an overhead reach, we have to have lungs that will fill from the bottom up, which means that that posterior lower aspect of the of the rib cage has to be able to expand. So I have to be able to put air there, right? <clears throat> so that be step that would be step one for me to reach up overhead, correct? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. If I'm in quadruped, is the is the scapula in its traditionally referred to upward rotation position? It is. Awesome. Would that create concentric orientation of that, that dorsal rostral space? Yeah. Excellent. What would happen to the space below it? It would expand. <laughs> okay. So relatively speaking, it, it, it would expand. So this is this is an IARD representation, correct? And so mm -hmm. if we looked at so so let's look at this for a second. Look at the pelvis for a sec in its IARD representation. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, would you have a nutated sacrum? Mm -hmm. Cool. Would the, would the posterior lower aspect of that pelvis probably be in, in an expanded representation because of that, that nutated sacrum? There you go. So we created the same representation in the thorax that we just had in the pelvis. So if you look at it from that perspective, now you can kind of see like, oh, posterior lower would be expanded under those circumstances. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So as, we, as the scapula is moving through its traditionally referred to upward rotation, where, if I, have, if, I, if I have concentric orientation of the dorsal rostral, where am I promoting expansion to allow that arm to move through internal rotation? Can you repeat the question? I can, I think. So, <laughs> so as you're raising the arm, the scapula yeah. 
okay, the, like I said, traditionally they'll say that the scapula upwardly rotates. <clears throat> that creates concentric orientation of dorsal rostral. You would agree with that, mm -hmm. right? Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So where would the expansion be occurring that allows me to move through this, 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 this part of the reach where the scapula is actually moving? Where would I expand? Anteriorly. Perfect. Okay, so that would be kind of like if I was in that quadruped position. So now I got posterior lower expansion and I've got anterior expansion on the mm -hmm. front side that gets me through that, that middle range. Would you agree? Yeah. Awesome, okay. So to go higher, right? To go up higher, so above this level, okay? Where do I need to expand? Upper do dorsal rostral. Okay, if I'm gonna do it in external rotation, that is correct, okay? If, I, mm -hmm. if I'm gonna be able to access external rotation at the top of the overhead reach, that is what I would need, okay? How do I get that? You uh, Are you asking about the exercises or? Uh... Well, what would need to happen? So we've talked about where we need to expand so we can access certain spaces with our arm. OK, so if I want to get my 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 arm up overhead, you, you are correct that I need to expand the the upper DR. Right. OK, so, so that upper dorsal rostral has to expand like what a prone we... position. Say again. Where the, the prone position where the knees would be a little higher. So the air is driven more to the upper part of the lungs. OK, so so I like that. OK, but to drive to make sure that the air goes there and doesn't go elsewhere, what would what? What do I need to now compress that was previously expanded? Below the scapula. And? The do, do, uh, anterior. Yeah. So, so all those places that I expanded to, to get the arm to pass through those ranges will progressively squeeze back in to push the volume of air into the space that I need to access the space. Mm -hmm. do, does that make sense? Yeah. I'm just trying to picture an exercise that would allow me to do that. Yeah. So, so you take your, uh, you, you, you take your inverted activities Th that will, cause that flip flops the airflow, right? So, so it starts, mm -hmm. to, it makes it easier for me to put air in, in the upper part of the, the rib cage, which is now the lower part of the rib cage when you kick somebody's behind up in the air. Right. But you might need other activities to, to transition you into that position. You can't just go diving right into it because if you don't have the original expansion, you get there with a compensatory strategy to start with. And now you're you're behind the eight ball already. OK. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, perfect sense. OK. But does um, it answer your question? It does. I, I just wanted to check one other thing because then I started to draw what's happening because I uh -huh. wanted to understand. Yeah. So yeah. when you're in that 120 to 180 reach, um, I just wanted to picture, if I'm not mistaken, it's like the uh, ER representation of the scapula again. Yep, I hope so. Because think about this, how are you going to get air how are you going to get air into the upper dorsal rostral if it's pressing against the, the back of the thorax? Okay. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't get the arm overhead. It just means you're not going to get it overhead at an ER representation. Mm -hmm. Okay. You understand that, right? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to ask when the scapula is in this presentation, the way that it's pressing against the thorax is with the lateral border. Or no. It, it, the, the lateral border will be will be uh, closer to to that that compressive strategy because the medial border has yes, to, okay. it has to create the space right. So mm -hmm. this is the top. I don't think my scapula is close, but if this is the top of the scapula, it's gotta it's gotta move back mm -hmm. to allow it to expand. So it's gonna turn. It's gonna actually be on an oblique. It's gonna do that, and then this space would fill up so I can get my arm over head. But keep in mind, keep in mind. We're talking about a, a space that we're using that inhalation strategy. The difference between just reaching into that space and pressing a weight <clears throat> into that space or accessing that space in internal rotation, which would be the very end range of overhead reach, okay? So for me to get my arm all the way overhead, like, like I'm reaching upward, you're gonna recompress that, 
that scapula against the rib cage because it's going to be a late representation and you're going to end up compressing that. So the space that you create as you transition closer and closer to the overhead is going to disappear again. Okay. 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 Because there'll be like if you were stand if you were standing on your hands, like if you're, you know, you you're upside down and you're doing a handstand, you can't mm -hmm. do that in extra, you can't do that in external rotation. Yeah, yeah, I imagine. <laughs> well, it'd be like standing on your feet, right? Mm -hmm. you try to stand on your feet in external rotation. Some people do, and it hurts, right? But again, we go back to Andrew's question when we were talking about single leg stance or or the bilateral stance, you're going to be biased more towards internal rotation at that point because we have to push into the ground, right? So if I'm mm -hmm. inverted, like fully inverted, I'm pushing into the ground, you're going to get a lot of compression in, in the dorsal rostral and upper DR, okay? Okay, perfect. 